But today we praise God not only because Martin was politically involved, but because he was godly and faithful enough to maintain his theological integrity, his ethical sensitivity, his political independence. For you remember after he stood in the Riverside Church in New York City and came out against the war, the whole board of the Southern Leadership Conference voted not to support King's stand against the war. The White House closed its doors to Dr. King. Northern white liberals parted company with King. Highbrow intellectuals wondered out aloud if King had really had the expertise, the bona fides to speak out on foreign issues. Some of our prominent Jewish friends defected from the civil rights movement. Roy Wilkins himself, African American of blessed memory and of the NAACP denounced King's position. Carl Rowan started Dr. King in his column. The New York Times uh, condemned King. Many black pastors closed their pulpits to King. Funding sources for civil rights dried up, but King held on to his convictions. He was so focused and so centered that he would not let political expediency to narrow the scope of his spiritual conscience, his persistent love and prophetic commitment. He was our conscience. Conscience is that which drags you through the uncomfortable. For even as he spelled out the enemy, he would not give us permission to hate them. He said, that's your enemy, now love them. And when other voices said, hate them, Martin said, no, love them. Love your enemy, bless those that curse you. Yeah. Do good to those who persecute you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Love is more powerful than hate. And they killed him. And I stood on that corner in Indianola, Mississippi, filled with rage and emptiness and frustration because I had been deserted by my advocates. My conscience had been destroyed. My dreamer had been annihilated. My dream had become a nightmare. And there I was full of rage and frustration because my advocate had been taken away. But 44 years later, here I stand in Hartford, Connecticut, not hopeless, not defeated. My voice had been taken away. My conscience had been wiped out. My dreamer had been annihilated. But 40 plus years later, I've got a dream. i got a conscience. It's because Martin Luther King Jr. was not the voice. I found out all he was was an echo. There was a voice before that voice. Before that voice ever voiced its voice, there was a first voice. And the second voice heard the first voice. And the second voice echoed the first voice. It was the first voice that declared, before there was a then or there, a when or where, let there be light. And there was light. It was the first voice that spoke the universe and humanity into existence and spoke again and said, it's good. It's very good. It was the first voice that declared, God is love. Love is of God. It was the first voice that declared, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. So the enemy, the enemy didn't have its day 44 years ago. All the enemy dealt with was an echo. But the first voice went untouched. The reason I still have a dream, though the voice is long gone, is because there are still echoes all around. Echoes in this sanctuary. Echoes in this city. Echoes, can't you hear the echoes? We heard them tonight in the words that were offered. We heard it tonight in that young man who sang that spiritual. Echoes all around us. The work goes on. 
the dream never dies.